There's new information regarding the investigation into Japan's March 2011 nuclear accident. Investigators believe extreme heat in the Fukushima Daiichi power plant may have melted some key parts. The news has the Tokyo Electric Power Company taking action. Officials at TEPCO believe that damaged parts impeded emergency responders from cooling down the number two reactor. The failure caused the reactor to melt down and release large amounts of radioactive substances. Investigators say the temperature inside the reactor exceeded 200 degrees Celsius at the time of the accident, a temperature hot enough to melt some key parts. TEPCO officials say there are other reactors equipped with the same parts. The utility plans to replace the parts with heat-resistant ones. Zero point sixty-three microsieverts per hour. On the fifth day of December. 2015, Asaka service area of Sohok Expressway, Koryama City, Fukushima Prefecture, Japan. Why is this place high voltage? It's about 0.60 microsieverts per hour. 0.64 microsieverts per hour. Zero point sixty-three microsieverts per hour. Microsieverts per hour. Two point forty four microsieverts per hour. Two point twenty microsieverts per hour.
Workers at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant will get a helping hand in decontaminating its crippled reactors. Engineers have designed a new robot to assist with cleanup work in the reactor buildings before the plant is decommissioned. The robot was developed by companies including Mitsubishi Heavy Industries and the plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company. It can reach upper floors and deep inside the buildings. Workers have already been using cleanup robots to strip away contaminated surfaces, but the machines could not reach the upper floors. The new robot comprises four compact devices connected by hoses and cables that can extend up to 65 meters. The front part does the decontamination work. The two central machines supply chemicals and other materials, and the last one is used for communication. Tokyo Electric officials hope to deploy the robot at the plant from April next year. Japanese and U.S. officials gather every year for a drill at an American naval base near Tokyo. Their focus is to make sure a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier doesn't pose a safety risk. NHK World's Kazaki Hirama has more. About 160 people from the Japanese government and the U.S. Navy took part in the drill at the Yokosuka naval base. They took part in a scenario involving the USS Ronald Reagan. The nuclear-powered aircraft carrier was deployed to the base earlier this year. Participants pretended a small amount of radioactive water had leaked from the vessel and practiced their response. After the ship's crew got a warning about the leak, they sent out a research vessel to figure out if any radioactive water had seeped into the sea. Information sharing is the other key component for today's exercise. The aim is to make sure information follows smoothly between the U.S. Navy and Japanese officials from the national to the local level. Here in Yokosuka, the mayor and senior officials are meeting with U.S. personnel after receiving the first news of the simulated nuclear leak. They're holding a mock briefing to practice how each side would respond. City officials went over the steps for making sure citizens received accurate information. The Ronald Reagan replaced another nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that returned to the U.S. for maintenance. Its arrival in October triggered protests. Residents said not enough was being done to ensure their safety. Some are still concerned. They came to see how the safety drill played out. Ordinary citizens should also be involved in this drill so that we can be prepared for disaster too. The Japanese government overhauled its guidelines on nuclear accidents after the 2011 disaster in Fukushima. But the guidelines don't cover accidents involving nuclear powered vessels. The central government needs to fully understand how the drill is carried out. Experts are currently looking over the guidelines. So I'd like to pay close attention to those discussions. Everyone involved says close communication between U.S. and Japanese officials and authorities in Yokosuka is one key to keeping everyone safe. Kazuaki Hirama, NHK World.
number of foreign visitors to Japan climbed to another record. Government officials say almost 18 million people came to the country in the first 11 months of 2015. That figure is four and a half million more than last year's record. Officials say the weaker yen and relaxed visa requirements for Chinese travelers are the main factors behind the After a five-month wait, Japan's Sport Council has revealed two new designs for the national stadium that will host the Tokyo 2020 Olympic and Paralympic Games. The original stadium plans were scrapped on cost grounds. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa has that story. These are two proposals for Japan's new national stadium. Plan A, a stadium with wood and greenery, will offer a leafy setting on a terrace surrounding the stadium reflecting traditional Japanese design. Plan B, set to create a new tradition for the 21st century. 72 wooden pillars support a stand that looks like a porcelain bowl. People in Tokyo were curious to see the new designs. They are simple and they don't look too showy. They're both good because I've never seen anything like this before. They are ordinary. There's nothing special about them. We need to think what the stadium will be used for after the games, and it needs to match its surroundings. In July, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe scrapped the original stadium design by London-based architect Zaha Hadid in the face of opposition to a rising price tag. The cost of building it had risen to almost $2 billion, nearly double the original estimate. So the Japan Sport Council, or JSC, began inviting fresh proposals in September. These proposals will be graded on several levels taking into account the stadium's overall cost, including design and construction. Total costs have been capped at $1.3 billion. We'll make the process as transparent as possible and make public as much information as we can. The bidders say that costs for both stadium plans have come in below the budget cap. Backers of both plans say they will be able to complete the project by the end of November 2019 in plenty of time for the games. Plan A uses a simple structure with three layers of stands to reduce cost and time for construction. Plan B aims to reduce the amount of soil that will have to be excavated. The JSC screening committee will determine which proposal scores higher in terms of cost and overall feasibility planning. The winning stadium design will be selected before the end of the year. Four years after the tsunami, the town of Minami Sanriku still struggles. Almost 60 percent of its residents lost their homes, and more than a thousand families still live in temporary housing. NHK World's Ayumi Takahira has the story of one group of women trying to stitch their community back together. These women lost a lot in the March 11 tsunami. Their homes, their livelihoods, and even their sense of purpose. For team leader Katsuko Takahashi, the hardest part was not losing her house, but having nothing to do. Sewing changed that. I couldn't stop thinking over and over about the tsunami. I was so happy when sewing helped me forget it, and meeting the others helped me realize I'm not the only one to suffer. A Japanese sewing machine company donated hundreds of machines, as well as training, to the people of Minami Sanriku. This group makes bags and pen cases under the name Sewing House. The 14 members get together once a week to check on the progress of their work. I really enjoy our time here. Like just now, I was laughing so hard it hurt. <laughs> Yuki Watanabe is the youngest of the team. <laughs> I'm happy when I'm able to saw how I want. <laughs> Her family is one of those who still live in temporary housing. She says she works 
in order to create a better future for her children. I work about five hours a day, but during our busiest times, I try to sew more even after I put my kids in bed. <laughs> but even as families like Watanabe's continue to feel the effects of disaster, there are signs the Japanese public is starting to forget about them. Sales of sewing house products have been shrinking too. Their products did attract the attention of one man, Japanese fashion designer Akira Minagawa. He wanted to help the region and visited sewing house last year. The team's energy impressed him. He commissioned them to package his designer textiles, which sell 20,000 sets a year. Minagawa also funded the construction of a new studio. I want the fashion industry to offer people an environment in which to work more comfortably. I hope this will be something like a first model case. The studio is ready six months after construction began. The members inspect everything from storage spaces to floor finish. Takahashi calls it a generous gift and says it will continue to motivate them. This new studio inspires our attitude toward our work and the quality of our products. Please continue supporting us. The members plan to expand. They will bring in more local residents, welcoming those looking for work and a companionship, just like they had. The project is one way for the town to stitch together a future. Ayumi Takahira, NHK World.